There's a word tossed around a lot in Christian circles. Gospel. But do you know what it means? Let's think about it. Even non-Christians are familiar with the word gospel. I mean, we have categories of music called gospel music. Southern gospel music, contemporary gospel music, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call the first four books of the New Testament the Gospels. But what is the Gospel? Ask any kid that's been raised in church and they'll quickly tell you it's the good news. What good news? Is there bad news that contrasts this good news? The Great Commission is to go out and to make disciples. Now if Jesus told us to go into all the world and preach the Gospel to all creation, how are we supposed to do this if we don't even know what the gospel is? If I ask you what is the gospel, can you tell me? It amazes me how often professing Christians cannot answer this simple question. If you don't understand the gospel, how can you be sure you've even obtained salvation? And how can you share the gospel with others? Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. If the gospel can save us, then it must be pretty important. We can't be like babies that don't know anything. It's time to stop being babies, take that binky out of your mouth, stop sucking your thumb, throw down that blanket, and grow up in Christ. Now the gospel is simple. It's the death of burial, and resurrection of Christ. Paul lays it out in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The first four verses say, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. So he died, was buried, and then resurrected. And then he appears to those that knew him and to others to prove that he really did rise from the dead. Now this good news doesn't live in a vacuum. It's contrasted with some really bad news. We've all sinned and we are separated from God. If we die in that state, it's permanent. But this really bad news makes the gospel really, really good news. By placing your trust in Jesus Christ, you can conquer sin and death through his work on the cross. Great, so now we know the basics of the gospel. And that's just the basics, mind you. You could spend a lifetime digging into the richness of the gospel and scripture and I don't have a lifetime in this video. Well, how do you share the gospel? Now, there's this popular phrase that shows up from time to time. Share the gospel, and when necessary, use words. I hate that saying. When is it not necessary to use words? It's always necessary to use words to share the gospel. I understand that your behavior matters, that your life should be displaying the fruit of the Spirit, but smiling at someone or being nice to your coworker or saying God bless you is not sharing the gospel. The gospel is information. How do we exchange information? With words. A smile cannot convey the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Unless you're some sort of creepy ventriloquist. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. I mean, if you were to open the door for someone and say, after you, they're not going to turn around and say, oh my word, Jesus died, buried, and rose again. Now, God's heart to save humanity is communicated in scripture. It's everywhere. It's saturated with it. Now, there's no one chapter on salvation. It's diversified all throughout. This is done to protect it from influence from the enemy. You can't tear out a page of the Bible and lose the gospel. Now, nine years ago, I worked on a document that I titled Salvation. And what I did was I went through the scriptures looking for all sorts of verses dealing with the topic. 
and then I tried to organize them into one coherent message that sounded like it flowed naturally, as if written by one person at one time. I'm going to read that now, and I want you to listen to God's heart calling out to mankind. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. But God raised him from the dead, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, if this whole gospel thing is new to you, Perhaps it's time to surrender your heart today. If you hear him calling to you, repent of your sins. Turn to Jesus. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you will be saved. If you've already trusted in the saving power of Christ, then I challenge you to take responsibility for your service to God. Study up, dig in, and then share what you've learned with others. Start small, for you never know where that might lead you. And that's something we should think about.